the sound of babies. Good morning. For those of you who have forgotten, I am Pastor Brownlee. <laughs> now, for those of you who think that I haven't been doing anything for the last six weeks, I have been guest preaching at three different congregations. One I was at for four weeks in a row. So, uh, have uh, God has been using me in that way, and so we've enjoyed it. So. The one that we were at for a month, we had to get up at five in the morning to get ready to drive there. When you're retired, you don't like getting up at five in the morning. <laughs> but it was, it was a great congregation. It was interesting because Craig's grandparents were members of that church. So the first Sunday we were there, I said, do you know my, our grandson Craig? I said, yeah, yep. In fact, he's playing for me in a couple of weeks. So, so it was enjoyable. It's great to be back here and share with you God's Word. It's a very special day today. Um, today is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, I'm not preaching on the Pentecost text, but I will tie it into the sermon a little bit, because today is also Stephen Ministry Sunday for us. We are going to, five new Stephen ministers are going to be commissioned today to be a part of our ministry team. Uh, and then we are recommissioning all of our Stephen ministers, and we will do that later in the service. Also, we have a graduation video we'll be showing through the service today. So we have some different things happening, an exciting time to celebrate the, 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 the joy of being in the Lord's work and, and being in this place and worshiping together. The other thing I need to make you aware of is that the attendance cards. Uh, it's very important for you to sign the attendance cards. The Board of Elders have started a new procedure in which we are tracking members, and we do that through church attendance. And, and so it's important for you to fill that out and let you know that you've been, that you're worshiping with us. And it gives you the opportunity, if you need to give us some change of address or prayer concerns, you can put that on that. So as you leave, in the, bullet, in the pews, there's an opportunity for you to fill one out now if you, or during the service if you did fill one out when you came in. When you leave this morning, we'd ask that you would, if you haven't, fill one out and put it in the offering plate. So with that, uh, and again, just some different things that, again, summer is now going to be happening. Some different changes may be taking place during the summer, so just keep watching for that. VBS is coming up. There's some information about that. The Romans doing fine. We're always in need of helpers. <laughs> so if you would be willing to help, Andrea would appreciate having uh, the, more, more helpers than students. So if you can help in any way. So with that, let us begin our worship then by the singing of our first hymn.
Please rise as we begin our worship service this day. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Amen. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. We sing. The Lord be with you. Amen. 
Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for our readings. The Old Testament lesson is from Numbers chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from chapter, or Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made, much, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. So this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your, your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fires and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear, O oh Lord, the sound of thy call. Soul is longing for the glory 
We rise for reading the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of St. John, the seventh chapter. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not yet been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
You may be seated for our sermon hymn. Would you bow your heads with me in a word of prayer? Heavenly and gracious Father, as we again come before you this day, we ask that as on that first Pentecost, your spirit will be upon us this day. To open our hearts and our minds to hear that word, to have that word touch us and move us and to respond to the joy of what that word speaks to us. And so this day, O oh Lord, May the words that are shared with us make an impact in who we are and what we are as your people. In your name we ask it. Amen. The word of God that I would like to share with you today is not from one of the, any of the readings. <laughs> well, it technically is. Uh, our Old Testament reading is from Numbers chapter 11, verse 24. Our sermon text is from 1123. And I have to share with you a little bit how I got to that point, all right? Eleven, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today was as we talk about Pentecost and we talk about Stephen ministry, the verse before our text kind of just fit in really well. But let me give you the context of what's going on. Numbers is one of those books of the Bible that, for most of us, have probably not heard too many sermons on. When I open up my sermon file, if I have three or four sermons, texts from Numbers, that's probably a lot. It's not one of those books of the Bible that we just go to all the time as pastors say, oh, wow, this is what we're going to talk about. Because it's a story of the Exodus. That's what Numbers is about. And our chapter is after the children of Israel have left Mount Sinai and have made their way on uh, starting to go towards the promised land, they complain. <laughs> the children of Israel complain all the time. All right? That's the story of their, and we'll talk more about that. So God, they complain because they don't have any bread. So God gives them bread. Every morning they get manna. Six days a week they can gather it. On the sixth day they grab a double portion. They have enough for the Sabbath. And then they start over. But then they complain because they don't have water. Moses gives them water. They complain because they don't have meat. 
So God gives to them quail. Now, I can kind of understand where Moses kind of gets into this complaining too. Quail. I mean, it's all right. But how much meat do you get off a quail? You know, let's have some beef. Let's have some lamb. Let's have some real meat. And Moses even gets to that. And God is going to share with him our verse and tell you how we get to that. But the interesting part about our text for today and our reading for today is what happens afterwards. The children of Israel get to the promised land and God, they send 12 spies and they come back and say, wow, this is wonderful. But the people are too big, too strong, we can't conquer them. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, say, oh yes, we can, we can do this. But the people listen to the 10 instead of to the two. And God gets so mad at them because they want to go back to Egypt. The problem with the children of Israel as they traveled, as I've shared with you before, it took them one week to get out of Egypt and took 39 years to get Egypt out of them. Because every time anything went bad, they wanted to go back to Egypt. And so God was going to destroy them all. Moses says, no, let's not do that. But God does destroy them all. For 39 years, anybody that was 13 years and older dies in the wanderings. Only two people, Joshua and Caleb, get to go into the promised land. And part of that's our text from verse 23. The Lord answers Moses on this meat issue as he says, is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not I will say what will come true to you. Or as another translation put it, and Yahweh said, is the Lord's power limited? Now you will see if my word will happen or not. So our sermon text is shortening the arm of God. All right? Shortening the arm of God. What does that mean to have a short arm of God? What does it mean to be short-armed? All right, now for most of us, when you think of some short-armed, we think of something physical, right? We think of someone who was born with a genetic disability defect or something happened to them in their life and that their arm got shortened, all right, and they can't reach. And sometimes we have that short arm thing. If we're reaching for something, we're just not tall enough. Our arms are not long enough. We feel we are short armed. That's kind of that idea. So what does it talk about? Well, what did the New Dictionary Commentary said, or the New Century said, having short arms, not reaching far, feeble kind of weak. Now, it's interesting because the Hebrew doesn't use short arms. It uses the word short hand. Come on, fat fingers. Here we go. All right. Can also be translated short-handed. All right. Now, we know what it means to be short-handed. Right? If you've ever had to plan something, or in charge of a family reunion or a family dinner or activity or served on a committee or a board and you were in charge of a big putting something on and all of a sudden you're short-handed, you don't have enough people or enough helpers, enough hands to help you do what you need to do. We can understand that. Have you ever thought that God has short-handed you? Have you ever thought that God hasn't given you all that you need to have and to do. And then the question is, how does this text tie in to Pentecost? Well, there's three things we're going to look at today. The first one is short-armed, strength has God short-armed us to provide what we need. For the children of Israel, it was food. And I told you a little bit of that story already, the food for the children of Israel. They left Egypt and they had enough food for the first week or so or whatever it is. All of a sudden they run out of food. They complain God provides for them this manna. And then he provides for them, as we know, quail, all right? 
for 39 years. For those of you that complain about eating leftovers, imagine for 39 years, this is your daily diet. Bread in the morning, quail at night. Get used to it, because that's all you're getting. But God provides. Can God really do that? Provide for us. Does he ever short arm us on providing food for what we need? Sometimes we may think that. Sometimes there's people that think that God doesn't provide, they don't have enough food. Well, the question is, is do you not have enough food or do you not have the food that you really want or like? My years of ministry, I have found that there have been individuals that sometimes when you provide for them things that they say, I have no food, so we give them a bag of food, and they look at that, and they have frowns on their faces. I don't like this food in here. And I'm thinking, it's food, right? It's what you need. It may not be what you really like or particularly want, but at least it's food. Can God really provide in our needs? You know, the New Testament, think about that, the feeding of the 5,000. Remember what the disciples said when Jesus said, you know, feed all these people? They said, there ain't no way, Lord, we're going to feed all these people. We don't even have enough money. And, not, and Jesus says, well, what do you have? He says, we have five loaves and two fish. I had to look that up because I always turn it around, all right? Okay. Five loaves and two fish, and they feed 5,000 men. They probably found more than that, but anyhow. And what happens when they get done? They pick up 12 basketfuls of leftovers. One for each disciple. Because disciples believe God couldn't do it. Couldn't take these, Jesus couldn't take those five loaves and two fish and feed all those people. But God can do that. Can God feed and provide for you? Provide that need for you? Or do you think his arm is shortened and not he is shortening his arm in providing for you? If you really believe that God does not provide for you what you really need and you need your food, then you need to change one of the prayers that you pray. When we get to that phrase, give us this day our daily bread, you need to eliminate that because you don't believe that God can give that to you. If you don't believe that, if you believe God's arm is too short to provide for you what you need, then when we say the Lord's Prayer, don't say that because you don't believe it. But if you do believe it and you know that God provides, we will continue to ask him to give us our daily bread. Secondly, Shortening the arm of God to save his people. That's what God was all about. That's what God is all about. The most amazing thing is you stu- the more you study God's word, and the more you go back and you follow that pattern from Genesis through Revelation, read again the story, follow that story through, you will find that all the Bible really comes down to one, uh, this one phrase, God saving his people. That's what it was all about. That's what the creation was about, believe it or not, and that's what ends up in the book of Revelation. God saving his people. From what? From their destruction. Now this was evident in, our, in chapter 11 of Numbers. God had taken the people from Egypt, where his chosen people had went there and had become slaves over time and slowly were being destroyed. Even though they were growing a powerful nation, they never were going to be his chosen people, have their own land, going to be the ones that, the, that would have their own kingdom to rule. They were always going to be slaves. And so God saves them from that. Through that series of plagues, leads Pharaoh to let them go, and they get to the Red Sea. And they stand at the Red Sea and they believe that God's shortening that arm again on them. Moses, what? Where are the boats? There are no boats. God parts the Red Sea, they grow over it, God saves them. Shortly after wandering towards Mount Sinai, they complain again. Throughout all of their history, God continues to step in and save them. 
from their enemies, continues to save them when they get into trouble. But sometimes he has to save them because their destruction is self-made. The story of the Exodus is when the people complain, God, they tick God off. And he brings plagues and destruction upon them and some of them get destroyed. Why? Because they don't trust God to provide. They put their faith in themselves instead of in God. And they do things that causes them to be destroyed. You know, God saves us from our destruction. God has provided a way for us to know that he is always walking with us. He has saved us, provided that power of the word, provided that faith in us to know that through Jesus Christ we have been saved. But we have this tendency sometimes to self-destroy ourselves. We sometimes get to the point that we just do things that we know are wrong. All you do is go back to the <laughs> Adam and Eve. Let's go back to Adam and Eve. We fall in the same pattern that they do, right? God says, don't do this. And we say, oh, that's, we can still do this. We're not going to get in trouble. God did not really mean that, that we couldn't do this and do that. And all of a sudden, then we wonder why these things happen to us. We wonder why we have problems and struggles in our lives. We wonder why some of the actions that we have done cause problems to occur in our lives. We are on that path of self-destruction because of sin. Remember the middle letter of sin? That's where that self-destruction. It's always about me. It has a way of destroying everything around us. It destroys our health. It destroys our relationships. It destroys even things that we try to strive to do. Sin does that. But God has provided a way. Remember, his plan is salvation. From Genesis 3 on, God's plan of the creation of the world, he knew man was going to sin. He had this plan, and he said, he said to the Ch Adam and Eve before they left the garden that one day there would be a Savior that would come. One day there would be one to make this right. God's plan was always to save his people. And throughout the Old Testament, it keeps sharing that, that one day this Savior would come. And then one day comes with Mary and Joseph, they are told that the Savior is going to come into the world. They are going to be the parents of that child. And that he is going to be named Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. And he went to that way of the cross for you and for me to save us. People that self-destruct ourselves, themselves. People that continue to get into trouble. People that continue to sin. Because God wants to love us and forgive us. He never shortens his arm at all when it comes to the cross. Number three, he never shows, shortens his arm to help us. You know, God has a way of providing the, for us to get through the tough times. Grief, divorce, life changes. We all go through those, and sometimes we get through them fine, and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we need someone to just stand beside us, to listen to us, to pray with us, to give us words of encouragement, and just to be there. God has provided a ministry for that to happen. It's called the Stephen Ministry. On Stephen Ministry Sundays, I always get to preach because the Stephen Ministers like me to preach. <laughs> because I'm a Stephen Minister. I'm a Stephen Ministry leader. I have been. All right? I also have been a person who has had a Stephen minister. Because I went through a time of grief. I went through a time of loss. 
I've went through some struggles. I needed somebody else to just talk to me. And they say, well, pastor, you should know all that. You've been trained and you've done that. Yes, but sometimes that isn't enough. Sometimes we think we're short, God's shortening his arm with us and not giving to us what we need. We need somebody to help us. So many times we think we can do it by ourselves. We don't need any help. You know, that's an in, inbred nature in us, you know that? My children will tell you that one of their favorite sermons when they were young was the one that I told the story about them. As parents and grandparents, you will relate to this. Remember when your children were learning to tie their shoes? They got real proud when they could tie their shoes. And then there was that Sunday morning or that time you had to go somewhere and you were running late, okay? And they were taking their time to tie their shoes and it wasn't working, they were starting over. And you come to them and you say, I'm gonna help you with that. And what did they say to you? I can do it by myself. I don't need your help. That's us. That's human nature. That's that sinful part that says, no, I can't do it by myself. I can do it myself. I don't need your help. You can't help me. I can work through it. I can solve it. I can get through this. Well, sometimes we just can't. And as a pastor, I will tell you that Stephen Ministry is one of the greatest ministries a congregation can have to extend that arm and hand of God. Because I can't be there. We can't be there all the time for you. But Stephen Ministers, we can train and equip them, and they go and carry on for us and help share that love and grace with others. They help. And today we are going to have five more that we're going to bring into our fold here, recommission the other ones, because we want to provide for you that help that you would need. And if you feel that you may have that gift to do that, just talk to anybody that has one of these blue badges on, and we'll talk to you about that. So what does this all mean to us in our life? Pastor, it's Pentecost Sunday, and you haven't talked about Pentecost yet. All right, here we go. Shortly, all right? So what does it really mean to see when you have a need? That's what Pentecost is all about. Seeing the need. God saw the need to save the world. And so he had this plan. Jesus carried that out. He says, you stay in Jerusalem till for 50 days, 10 more days after my ascension. The Spirit will come upon you, and you will come and share, the, and it will empower you to reach out and share the gospel, the good news with others. To see people who need to know the saving message of Jesus Christ. You know, the most remarkable thing about Pentecost was not that 3,000 people were converted. It was that 3,000 people heard the gospel message in their own language. The other the amazing thing about Pentecost was is that many of us learned it wrong. We learned that, oh, that's a great Mission Sunday thing. Yeah, it was a great Mission Sunday emphasis, but do you know who 95% of the converts were? Jews! Wasn't Gentiles. It was Jewish people. It was Jewish Christian. They became Jewish Christians. The first hundred years of the Christian church till 100 AD, the early Christian church was predominantly Jewish people who converted to Christianity. Then eventually the Gentile world numbers took over. God came to his people. Remember, his plan was always to save his people. So they come to the Jews first and share the gospel message. When the Jews reject or don't listen, they went to the Gentile world. And today we still have that mission to share that message to those in the world, to see a need. What need do we see out there? Maybe it's social. Maybe it's just comforting and strengthening. Maybe it's just people whose lives are a mess that they need to hear. 
the gospel message of Jesus Christ. You see, God has provided a way, a power, and means for us to respond to that. And one of the most amazing things that has happened in my years of ministry as I grow more mature, as I've come to see that power that I never saw in my early years of ministry, I just did it, and that was baptism. Just think about that, at baptism, a child receives the Holy Spirit through the water and the Word, turns their life around. They don't know it, but eventually as they grow, they grow in that and they become a child of God, become involved, and eventually learn to share the gospel message with others. That's a power that the Holy Spirit gave to the disciples and on 120 others on Pentecost Sunday and gives to us still today. So the question is, how are you going to respond to the needs you see? Are you going to short the hand of God? Are you going to think his arm is too short for you? Or are you going to reach out and grab it? In Jesus' name. Amen. And now the peace of God, which is beyond all human comprehension and understanding, may keep his hearts and minds fixed on his cross and his great love for us. And may we continue to be his people, live our lives each and day in the joy of that faith walk with him. In his name we ask it. Amen. One of the great things we have to see that need and to share that need is that God gave to the church the creeds. You know the most important thing about the Apostles' Creeds and the Nicene Creed? To me is the first word. It's not about what, it is about what it, what it shares, but the first word just sets the tone. It's, what, it's all about us. It's a profession of what we believe and what we want to share and what's important for others to hear. That's why we say, I believe. We make that profession we make that confession. We share the truths every time we say those words. So would you please rise and join with me as we make that profession of our faith, as together we join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. I think the graduation video is next. Am I right? You may be seated.
always a joy and pleasure to celebrate and see those pictures of these young people that you've watched grow up and now are graduating. As parents are really excited for those that have graduated for college, parents are hoping that they soon have jobs. <laughs> but we, we know they will, so we're happy and blessed for that. So, um, and that. In our prayers today, we have some very interesting things to share with you. When one of them we changed, we had to last yesterday take off the expecting and move down to one to birth because Mark and Paige B had their baby on Friday, okay? Very interesting name, Cyprian David. For all of you that are going, Cyprian, what is Cyprian? Cyprian was an early church father, very, very influential in writings and teaching and all those things. And um, so that's a, it, it'll be an interesting name for him in that when people ask him his name, he'll be able to testify about how Christ is important in his life. And maybe that's why they chose, but it was really exciting time. So mother and baby are doing fine. Paige was a teacher here. She finished up her year. She was, is going to be teaching up one of the schools in northern, uh, north of King of Kings. There's an academy up in that area, north up in Liberty in that area. So that part of the Kansas City area, so we we excited for them and their family as they go there. So that's one of the changes, and then we keep remembering some of the other things in, in the prayer requests that are there. So I invite you to rise as we join in prayer. Heavenly Gracious Father, again as we come before you this day, we are indeed thankful. Thankful that your arm is not too short for us to do great things. That your arm is not too short for us to put in to our lives, the Holy Spirit, through the gift of baptism. And today as we celebrate all those who, whose names are on our screen that celebrate their baptismal birthdays, we rejoice, O oh Lord, that that power has been given to them, that they have grown in it or are growing in that power, and that they are using their gifts and talents for your kingdom. May you continue to just be with them each and every day. We continue to this day as we pay, pray for ironically pray for Paige and her baptismal birthday, and for Benjamin and Sharon and Jocelyn and Grace and Jocelyn and David and Lucas and Lou and Gabriella, David, Phil, Noah, Emily, Reese, Aiden, Nicholas, Lindsay. May you continue to just always surround them with that power of the Spirit to guide and direct their lives. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh Lord, for the mission of the month, the ALERT program, Lutheran Emergency Response Team, those individuals that are trained to go and help in natural disasters. And we have a group of people here that are gonna be trained to do that, to be able to respond, to help, help people in their time of need, not just see the need, but respond and help to them. We pray, O oh Lord, you bless them in all they do and those of our church in their training. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the graduates this day as we celebrate them from wherever they graduate from, from eighth grade, from high school, from college, from graduate school, from careers that, and into careers or into more schooling, Lord. We just pray that you'll continue to be with them and bless them and train and equip them to be your people that not only grow in the knowledge of this world, but continue to share their faith whenever and however they can. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the family of Matt C., who experienced a family house fire. We pray, Lord, that any way that we can see a need to help them or any way we can respond, Lord, that you will use us as individuals or as a congregation to be able to help them in their time of need. We pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to be with them and strengthen them and keep them always focused on how your love and grace continues to surround them each and every day. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we know that you are the great healer of all people. And O oh Lord, we bring before you those who need your healing power. We pray, O oh Lord, for Roger, for Mary Ann, for Sharon, for Ilsa, and for Barb asking the Lord that you will touch them in your special way to bring healing into their lives. If it be your will, O Lord, to heal them, not here, but heal them by taking them home to be with you, Lord, we just trust that you will do what's best for them. 
Until that time, or whatever your plan, O Lord, continue to strengthen the family and loved ones who are going through this time. May they always know the joy that you walk with them through these times of struggle. Lord, in your mercy. We rejoice, O Lord, with Mark and Paige, and we look forward with Stephen and Laura, Alex and Maddie, and Britton and Rachel as they long for the day for their gift of a child as Paige and Mark have now celebrated the gift of a son. May you, O Lord, just continue to be with these who are waiting and that they anticipating this new life in their families. And we as a church are excited because we wait for not only that new life to enter in, but the day in which that child takes that new life through the gift of baptism and becomes a part of our family here and a part of your family forever. Until that time, O oh Lord, continue to surround those waiting and continue to be with Mark and Paige as they joy, joyously celebrate this new life in their household. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we have many other concerns of our hearts and our lives that we bring to you now in the prayer that you taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. You may be seated. At this time, I invite Debbie Barnes, Joanna Hadel, Greg Hawley, Karen Mendall, and Donna Peterson to please step forward. And would Judy and Bunny come up here too, please? <coughs> oh, there she is. I saw her earlier, so. It's a very special day for these new Stephen ministers who have completed their training. It's a long training process. We will not lie to you about that, okay? But it's a very enjoyable. It starts out, you wonder where in the world you're going to go with this thing, and then by the end of it, you say, oh, are we already done, you know? And, and what you've learned and grow is, is, is such a, a fantastic process. Um, when I first class I ever taught, and one of my first students was all right, in Jeff City, I had never been through the Stephen Ministry training. I went and became a Stephen leader. And so I'm going through the class, and Judy will tell you the stories of these, that every once in a while I go, oh, now it makes sense why we're doing this. <laughs> and that. But it's a great experience, a great, and we are so happy that you have joined our went through it and now we're going to serve God in this way. And so we would like to commission you uh, as into this today. So hear now what we have to share with you. Dear brothers and sisters, you've been equipped to serve as Stephen ministers of Bethany Lutheran Church. Listen now as we find words in the scriptures. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for people, since you know that you receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians chapter 3. So brothers and sisters, each of you has been comforted by God with the good news of Jesus' life and death for you. We ask now that you join in serving our Lord and those in our congregation neighborhood who need to be comforted. As the Lord has responded to your needs, we ask you to strive to be responsive to the needs of others. As the Lord took the burdens of the world on his shoulders and, as a, and has been a friend to you in troubled times, we ask you to be a friend to those who are burdened under the stress of daily life. As the Lord patiently listens when you turn to him, we ask you to, patiently, to be a patient listener in a hurried world. As the Lord Jesus has broken down the barriers that separated you from God, we ask you to heal divisions when, wherever you find them 
and strive to make people whole. As the Spirit of Christ has given you gifts for service, we ask you to use your skills and talents to help those people whom you serve and pray to them. As the Lord Jesus has shown his care for you, we ask you to help this congregation grow as a caring community through your own caring ministry. As the Lord has revealed his presence to you through faith, we ask you to share your personal experiences of faith with those around you so that they too may celebrate the presence of Christ in our world today. So I ask you, new Stephen ministers, are you prepared to meet those requests that we ask of you? Respond yes with the help of God. Yes. Are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, build up, and comfort people in all their needs? Then respond with yes with the help of God. Yes with the help of God. Bethany Lutheran Church, we ask you as members of this congregation to open your hearts to the ministry of these people and to pray for them, that they may be effective servants of Christ. Are you prepared to meet this request? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Bethany, are you also willing to accept their ministry when you, when you need help? To allow these individuals to work with you as you face struggles in your life, that you might receive support and help, receive support and help from your Christian brothers and sisters. If you are prepared to meet this request, answer yes with the help of God. Stephen Ministers, are you prepared to serve as Stephen Ministers at Bethany Lutheran Church? Then respond with, yes, with the help of God. Yes, yes. with the help of God. Come forward now and receive a blessing. I'll just give you all a blessing where you're at. May God continue to be with you, Debbie, and continue to just equip you and share with you that joy of sharing and helping others. In his name, amen. May God's spirit join us, be in you and strive and to give you all the gifts you need to be an effective in sharing that love and grace with others. Donna, may God continue to just continue to make you a God of comfort and joy in sharing that love and grace that you have with others, that they may know the love of Jesus. Karen, may God continue to just bless you and equip you and use you for his caring ministry and touching the hearts and lives of so many people. And Greg, may the power of his spirit just fill your heart and life, that you may just want to touch lives and help others to grow in that relationship with their Savior and with themselves, to know that God's love is always with them. Because you have promised faithfully to serve the Lord, Jesus and his people as Stephen ministers, I commend you to the care and guidance of the Holy Spirit as you now turn to care for others. Work hard. Use the skills you have learned, releasing the gifts and talents the Spirit of God has given you so that you might be a blessing to the people you meet and care for. Continue to study. Reflect upon the situations you encounter. Pray for the people whose lives you are privileged to share. Feel, be free to share your own personal frustrations and needs with others so that you might receive the same kind of care and love you offer to others. Act boldly and without fear, for Christ is with you. And may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray. Oh God, we ask that you take our sisters and brothers into your care. We ask that you be with Debbie and Joanna and, and Donna and Karen and Greg. You have blessed them with particular gifts and talents and have provided them with an opportunity to learn more about your help, helping people. May they serve you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May they be quick to serve, patient and listening, willing to share themselves with people. Give to us thankful hearts for them. Show them at times of stress and satisfaction, a special measure of your mercy and joy. Keep them strong in the faith you have given them for the sake of Jesus, 
who cares for us all in every way forever. In his name we pray. Amen. Yes? Okay. Can we have all the other Stephen ministers please come up right at this point? That are here, we're going to recommission you. Oh. Somebody in the back is not happy. <laughs> the Lord said, make a joyful noise. All right. <laughs> For you who have continued to serve faithfully, we thank you. And we ask that God continue to bless and use you in your gifts and helping members of this congregation meeting the needs that they need in their times of help. And so I ask you this day, are you willing to continue to serve? And are you willing to continue to use your gifts and talents for helping and caring for others? If so, say yes with the help of God. And now may God, who has commissioned you originally and now continues to reaffirm that commission, continue to be with you and bless you and give you that strength and courage and power to be Stephen ministers for him and for his kingdom. In his name, amen. Huh? Oh, my. I haven't done this for a year, I forget, okay. Here you go. Here you go, Debbie. This this officially says you are. <laughs> it's nice to frame and keep. There you go. There you go, Donna. Okay. And you will know them as official Steve ministers today, because one of the things Bunny's given to them is name badges. <laughs> So if you ever want to know what Steve Mystery is all about, you can talk to any of these people and, and we will tell you. There you go. I'm going to ask you to stay up here for the benediction and then we will go to our seats, okay? All right. So would the congregation please rise? Having now enjoyed the blessings of this day, we end our service as we started with God's blessings upon us. We ask his presence at the beginning. We ask his presence as we leave. And he gives us a little special blessing to help us go and to be his people. He empowers us with his spirit and his word to go blessed by him. So may the Lord now bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his promise and his presence and give you his peace.